Brother Johnny Groove 19 Promotions, Manning, South Carolina. Sincerely thanking everyone for tuning in to this installment of the 19 Report. As promised, we would come back to you with commentary on part two. Part one was Your Father the Devil. If you haven't um, checked out that commentary, you can go to our personal website, the 19 Report on YouTube, and you'll be able to view that. Or you can go to, you can either go to YouTube or you can go to our personal website, which is the 19 Report. And we have that on the front page of our personal website. Again, we're broadcasting live on Ustream, and we're broadcasting live on our personal website, and we're broadcasting live for a few minutes on Facebook Live. So tune in with us. And for those of you who are familiar with our website, if you look down at the bottom of where we're broadcasting now on the uh, podcast live page, there is a donate button if you would like to donate. Um, and have your name or your business mentioned in one of our commentaries, or if you have something that you would like talked about in one of our commentaries, please do not hesitate to um, send your information, and we will be able to work from that point on. Now, let's get started because we have a lot to cover. This is What is Sodom and Gomorrah and Where Is It Now? And I'm praying that it will come across well. We have several things to cover, so let's go right into it. Um, I want to always put up the biblical text that I'm utilizing to bring the point home. So if you will turn with us to Ezekiel 16, 48 through 50, Ezekiel 16, 48 through 50. And it reads as follows. God compares Jerusalem to Sodom, saying Sodom never did what you and your daughters have done. He explains that the sin of Sodom was that one, she and her daughters were arrogant Two overfed and unconcerned for they did not help the poor and needy they were haughty and did detestable things before me again Sodom and Gomorrah first I want to say that when you constantly um, repeat something without looking into it for yourself you give your you give your God-given right to no truth away And all of my life, I've heard the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, and I'm quite sure that in your lifetime, you've heard it several times because we always relate that story, that biblical story, to one particular thing. So all of my life, I've heard the story of Sodom and Gomorrah spoken of as if though the only sin committed by this place was homosexuality. In fact, I thought Sodom and Gomorrah was one place. I found out that God came to destroy five cities. But he spared one so that Lot and his family would have some place to seek refuge. Again, God came to destroy five cities. According to scripture, God was about to destroy all the cities of the plain, a particular area in the book of Genesis called the plain. In addition to Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities of Adma, the city of Zobium, the city of Zorah were also about to be destroyed. Now, Zorah was was spared so that Lot and his daughters could flee from, quote unquote, Sodom and Gomorrah. But Adma and and Zoboam met the same fate as Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, we are talking about what is Sodom and Gomorrah and where is that particular place now? I wanted to bring that point home because I want us to begin to, by God's permission, look deeper into the things that the ministers tell us, the preachers tell us, and just people walking on the street who call themselves godly tell us, when they quote a little piece of a scripture and we go with that little piece and don't investigate the biblical text for ourselves, we make a fool out of ourselves. So Sodom and Gomorrah was not just one place. So, uh, uh, one place, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zobium, and Zorah. God came to destroy all of these places for a particular reason. And for those who may have doubt about that, let's go a little deeper in. If you know me, you know I'm going to try to get into the text deep enough that we can say, oh, okay, he knows what he's talking about by God's permission. Now let's turn to Deuteronomy 29 and 23. Be patient with me because I'm building up to the subject at hand. Deuteronomy 29 and 23. And I want to say again, this is not a I'm, I'm not asking for anything. This is not like a, uh, a preacher preaching to you. This is knowledge being offered by God's permission based upon what he told me to say. So I'm not concerned with impressing anyone. All I'm concerned about is by God's permission, getting the message across clear enough because only God can change the mindset. So Deuteronomy 29 and 23 of the King James Bible. Reads as follows, 
and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that it is not sown nor bareth nor any grass groweth there, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zobiam, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Now, this is in Deuteronomy. This is calling out all of the, the city names of the place where God destroyed that we all assume was just homosexual activity, Sodom and Gomorrah. But it is much bigger than that. And we have to begin to, by God's permission, see it in a wider scope. And if we see it in a wider scope, then we can see ourselves in it and we can begin to realize that, wow, the people that I'm trying to condemn in my egotistical mind, those people are me. So what is the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, and why did God answer the call from the cities, and where did the call come from if the people in the cities were enjoying themselves and their indulgence in sinful practices? I'm going to say that again. The question, what is the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? What are the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah? And why did God answer the call from the cities? And where did the call come from? If the people in the cities were enjoying themselves and their indulgence in sinful practices. We are talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, what it is and where it is now. If you are not watching the news, you should turn it on for a minute. Floods in Louisiana, uh, earthquakes in Italy. Uh, fires in the the fires all throughout Washington State, almost sixteen cities have been c declared disaster areas. Murder, rape, robbery, molestation—all the order of the day. So it's easy to say that a homosexual is what provoked God to destroy these places. That's an easy thing to say. So those of us who aren't homosexuals would think that we are free from the guilt, free from the charges brought up against the city of the plains, the five cities. And even the homosexual in this modern day has found a way to bypass the laws of God by making up new laws in the name of God are totally disregarding God altogether. The entire world will be charged with manipulating the words of God and making them conducive to whatever we desire to do. Now, I want to show you a picture real quick. And those of you on Facebook Live, if y'all are still there, I apologize. I can't really um, broadcast that there. But you could go to um, our personal website and you will be able to see it. But I wanted to post this picture up. Now, being a homosexual, hey, that's your business. But when you take it out to the streets and my child may be out there, then that's something else altogether. Now, there's a gay pride parade. And the purpose of the gay pride parade is not for the people to say, respect me as a homosexual. The purpose of the gay pr pride parade in the minds of those overzealous homosexuals is we're going to force you to enjoy what we enjoy. And not only are we going to force it, but we're going to make it a law. So they've gone so far. Look at this. On the uh, body of a naked woman, homosexual, and they have cans of, uh, tear ga of um, fire extinguisher, but they got sperm written on it. And they're spraying the sperm all over the people in the, as they march down into parade. And on the woman's body with her breasts out, she has F church. And many of them have other things over their bodies as well. Now, if that is not a manifestation, look at this picture of men uh, being uh, convinced that what they are is okay by God. So when I'm saying that we have changed the rules of the church to make it work for our uh, selfish gain, then look at it. And not only have we changed the rules, but the government has said that it is okay. And so you see in the background, that's the White House with the rainbow. Now, in Scripture, the rainbow is something uh, supposedly that God showed Noah and, and said to him, because I've, I've destroyed all the sinful natures of people, there won't be any water anymore like the flood, but the next time there will be fire. But now the law says we're going to use this rainbow as a, as a means of showing that we're in favor of homosexuality. This is serious. It really is. Um, and we need to begin to look into it just the way it is and not get offended by, if possible, 
when someone is talking about it because it is getting out of hand. If you are a homosexual, that's your business. But when you begin to take it to the street, then it's all of our business. If you're a drug dealer and you're making millions of dollars, that's your business. But if your drugs and the shooting in the street begins to affect where children are being killed, like in Chicago and uh, Detroit and in Little Rock, Arkansas and other places, then that becomes a bigger problem. So we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, where it is now. Now I want to turn to Isaiah know the Isaiah the prophet I want to turn to Isaiah 1 of the King James Version of the Bible and we're going to read that Isaiah 1 of the King James Version of the Bible and it reads as follows except the Lord of hosts had left us uh, left unto us a small a very small remnant we should have been as Sodom and we should have been as Gomorrah so all throughout the Bible this place Sodom and Gomorrah is being mentioned Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed in Genesis. This is Isaiah. But yet Isaiah the prophet is mentioning Sodom and Gomorrah and mentioning the people of that time as Sodom and Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice unto me? This is God talking. What is your purpose for sacrificing to, sacrificing to me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When you come to appear before me, God says, who hath required this at your hands to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations, incense, and abominations unto me. The new moons and the Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. It is in equity, even the solemn meeting. All of it is sin now, God is saying. Your new moon and your appointed feast, my soul hateth. God says he hates that. They are terrible unto me. I am weary to bear them. This is God talking now. According to the scripture, God is saying all of our rituals, all of our holidays and pagan holidays from Christmas to Easter and all in between, he don't want nothing to do with it. And the only reason you and I do it is because we get pleasure from it. It has nothing to do with God. We are talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm coming to a point, as I said in my last commentary, don't jump the gun at the beginning. If you want to know what I'm about and what I'm talking about, you got to listen to the end because the end justifies the beginning. Now, and when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. This is God talking to the people now. The people who resemble Sodom and Gomorrah. You can pray all you want. You can hide your eyes, close your eyes, and, and, and talk to me all you want. But until you fix what is inside of you, and the only way you're going to fix it is to acknowledge it and pray to me to help you absolve this egotistical spirit, I don't hear you. So you can be successful in this world, and that's why I showed you the picture of, the, I didn't want to be vulgar with it, but the woman with the naked, with the breast out saying F church. So you can be successful without church or without God. God does not discriminate in that way. But if you want to be a godly person in accordance to God's words, there are some things that has to be corrected within us, but first they have to be acknowledged. Now we're in Isaiah 16. Listen to what God says has to be done. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless. Now, you know, the world want to do what they want to do and they say, God, don't judge or don't judge me. But God says in Isaiah 17, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together. Now, they got a song called Come Let Us Reason Together. And they take that little clip out of this very important passage of scripture and make reasoning compromise. So when they're saying come let's reason together, come let's compromise. We can do sin as long as it's law. But God says, I am not going to answer any of that foolishness now. Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now, this is under uh, obligations. 
We have obligations to God in order for him to correct our ways, our thinking, our doing. So there is a way out of this Sodom and Gomorrah. There is a way out of the punishment that is going to occur. But we have to begin to go deeper into scripture and make it not only clear to our own thinking, but clear to those who listen, want God's words, but are getting it corrupt. They're getting it stepped on, spanked down so that you can appease the people, but not please God. Isaiah 19, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now God is talking to the people. This is what I require from you. What are the people saying? No thanks, God. I'm, I'm this way and I want to stay this way. Forget you. No thanks, God. I got other plans. Now, let's go into Jeremiah 23 and 14. I see we're still up on, on Facebook Live. That's that's cool. So, as I said earlier, if you want to watch the um, broadcast, you can watch it live on our personal web page, The 19 Report. And I hope you will. I hope you will come to The 19 Report and help support us. We have a um, donate bar up underneath the live stream. And God willing, you can donate. And if you have a business or service that you would like to be the sponsor of one of our commentaries, say what you would like for us to talk about, and we will sponsor, we will broadcast and sponsor and put your name in the sponsorship of it. Jeremiah 23 and 14, we are talking about what is Sodom and Gomorrah, because we have deduced that Sodom and Gomorrah to a place, and we have reduced it down to one particular sin. And that sin that we say that is 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 abhorrible in the ears, eyes, nose of God is homosexuality. But I'm telling you, that's not all. It's much more than that. So let's go on and keep up with this and try to stay to the end. And I promise you, it'll make sense if it haven't hasn't already made sense by God's permission. Jeremiah 23 and 14. I have seen also in the prophet of Jerusalem. Now, understand that Jerusalem is where we are right America we're talking about the melting pot of every single race of people here so every ideology every religious uh, belief every gripe every racist thought every prejudice every everything is a melting pot of America so the destruction is here and it is happening and it is affecting everybody But we have to understand exactly how it is affecting us. Let me hold on for a minute. Let me see something because I got a frozen screen. Okay. It's just not. It's just frozen. I don't, I don't know. Let me see. Let me refresh that. One second, please. I want to make sure that the broadcast is coming through because I'm not recording on any other platform besides this. And the, uh, the thing is, I try to sneak my broadcast on because it's like every time I announce it, all of a sudden this – strong signal that I have, you know, for broadcasting and all of this equipment, the thing just locks up and freezes up. So let's go on. I'm going to keep talking because I don't want to delay it any. Jeremiah 23 and 14 of the King James Version of the Bible. I think I got a key logger in my other computer because it's moving so slow. I've seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. Now see if this is familiar. Listen to what is being said in Jeremiah. I've seen a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from its wickedness. They are all of them unto me as what? Sodom and the inhabitants thereof of Gomorrah. Now, this is all the way down to Jeremiah, but still Sodom and Gomorrah are being mentioned as places that... Um, affected the thinking, the, the mercy of God so much that it burns in his nostrils and the wrath of God, as we spoke about in part one of this, your father, the devil, is now inside of the individual. If you're still on with us on Facebook Live, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
If not, thank you anyway. I hope that you will share this information. We are live on Ustream also, and we are live on our personal webpage. Now, why are Sodom and Gomorrah mentioned by so many different prophets and messengers in Scripture? Because it is the general mindset and attitude of the people of the world. In essence, God no longer exists in his purest form because the learned, the educated people of the world manipulated God into a feeling. You know how you just feel something and you say that's God? Manipulated God into a position? You know how you get somewhere and you say nothing but God? And they've manip manipulated God into financial status. So that's why we always, do to God be the glory when we get something. Well, how you know that ain't the devil testing you? How you know because you got something new that's not a test from Satan? Why is it always to God be the glory? So Sodom and Gomorrah is selfish pleasure and overindulgence in worldly gluttony. I'm going to say that again. Sodom and Gomorrah, where is it? What is it? Sodom and Gomorrah is selfish pleasure, is overindulgence, and worldly gluttony. As God, as was mentioned earlier, and in, 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 in the beginning, God was angry because the people were selfish. So the book of Jeremiah, which came after the book of Genesis and the destruction of the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah echoes the same cry as that of the destruction of the old Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember that God came down himself. If the cry in Sodom and Gomorrah was as horrible as he, as he was hearing, to see if the cry was as, as horrible as he was hearing, and it was. I'm going to say that again. I was busy looking at the screen over there. But God came himself. That's serious business when God says, I'm going to go and find out if the cry is altogether like I'm hearing. And it wasn't the people that were crying out to God. It was the spirit of the people which belonged to God that was crying out to God. And if you did not listen to our last commentary entitled Your Father the Devil, I was explaining by God's permission that the spirit of man, the spirit that is in each individual, some of us have it, some of us don't, but that spirit is Jesus Christ. And the soul is God himself. And Jesus is within us trying to get us back to God, but we are offending the self so much that we are causing the spirit within ourselves to call out to God as a witness against ourself. So no one in Sodom and Gomorrah was crying and praying to, G to Jesus or to God. But God got the word and said, I will go down myself and see if what I'm hearing is altogether true. And if it is, I will know. The spirit, which is Christ in every human being, no longer wanted to be associated with the negative mindset of the people. So God came and God has come to America in the same way. And he has revealed himself to a few and he has revealed his intentions to destroy the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. You can take that or leave it. But if you can't look around and see what shape the world is in today and think because it's happening in Louisiana or in Italy, it doesn't affect us here in America. Why do you think American troops are in other countries? Because the welfare of what goes on over there affects us here. So they got to take care of business over there. So if a storm or anything occurs here in America, in any state, in any country, in any county, in any town, there's only one government here. So that government is being taxed by every event that occurs. Now, you don't think about it because you don't see it. But it's happening, and when it happens, something has to be done about it. So now, people who used to carry five and ten children on their taxes are getting letters in the mail saying, you owe us money. Why? Because we have to replenish the money that we are using with FEMA to help people. We got to replenish that money at an expedient rate. We got to get it back. So you got to give us back what we were letting you slide with. You owe it back to us. So the God of Sodom and Gomorrah in Scripture same God of today, same events are occurring because we haven't learned our lesson and we're going to prove it in a minute. Now, the few who know are pleading with God to have mercy on the ignorant people, the masses. And God has responded in the same way as he did with Abraham, 
Abraham thought that there had to be some righteous people somewhere in the city. And I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to read to you because Abraham risked his salvation with God to argue a point. He wanted to, to ask God, please don't be mad with me, but I got a few things I want to ask you. Would you kill innocent people? That's not your way, God. Now, God has already come. And he is talking to Abraham and telling Abraham, I'm going to destroy the five cities of the plain. And Abraham is pleading for the people. And Abraham says this. Let's go to Genesis 18, 23 through 21 of the King James Version of the Bible. Check this out. And Abraham drew near and said, "Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Talking to God now. Peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? This is Abraham talking to God. If there are 50 people in the city, you're going to kill them all? Now listen to God's response. That be far from thee to, to do after this manner, to slay the righteous. Not yet. Abraham is still trying to plead his case. 25. To slay the righteous with the wicked and that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? This Abraham talking to God. You God, shouldn't you do right? Now listen to God's response. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all of the place for their sake, for the 50 righteous. Now, Abraham know it wasn't 50 righteous in the city. So watch him break it down again. And Abraham answered and said, behold now, hold on. I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. I'm, I'm nothing. I, forgive me. Peradventure, there shall lack five of the 50 righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the cities for lack of five? And he said, if I find there 40 and five, I will not destroy it. So God says, okay, if they're not 50, I will save it. If it's 45, I won't destroy it. And then Abraham, knowing that there wasn't 45, comes back again. And he spake unto him yet again and said, peradventure, there shall be 40 found there. And he said, I will not do, do it for 40's sake. You tell me you find 40 righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah, and I will not destroy it. And Abraham thought to himself and said, man, in 30. And he said unto him, oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak. Peradventure, there shall be 30 be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30. Abraham comes again and he says, man, can't find 30. Behold now, Abraham talking to God, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord peradventure. There shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it, Abraham, if you find 20 righteous there. Abraham, knowing that there weren't 20 righteous there, said one more time, and he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this one more time, this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, God speaking, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Now, that was in Genesis. Now, let's look in Jeremiah 5. Now, God told Abraham, I will not destroy Sodom, Gomorrah, Zoam, Zoar, and the other one if we find 10 righteous, but all that he could find was three and a possible. And according to scripture, Lot's wife didn't want to stop partying. So she turned around. So all that was left was Lot and his two daughters. Now that is in Genesis. Let's go to Jeremiah. Now the book of Jeremiah, we are still walking through the Bible and we're walking through the Bible, but the scriptures are still the same. Sodom and Gomorrah from Genesis, now Sodom and Gomorrah still in Jeremiah 5. And Sodom and Gomorrah all the way to the end of the book. Why? Because you are looking for a particular place of Sodom and Gomorrah, a particular action, and you will never find it because that Sodom and Gomorrah is within each individual. Let's go into Jeremiah. I, and I got this from the Good News Bible because I wanted some good news. And good news to me is when God speaks to warn. That's good news. Good news to me is not you going to get a car because I'm thinking, well, Dag, I got to pay for it. And if it breaks down, I got to pay the repairs on it. I like the idea of the car, but it's not just that I'm getting a car. I'm also getting responsibility. Can I handle it? 
Jeremiah 5 of the Good News Translation. Let's read it. We're going to go through it as fast as possible. People of Jerusalem, America, run through your streets. Now, God already said to Abraham, if you find 10, I won't destroy it. Now, listen to what's being said in Jeremiah. People of Jerusalem, run through your streets. Look around. See for yourself. Search the marketplace. Can you find one person who does not, who does what is right and tries to be faithful to God? Question. If you can, the Lord will forgive Jerusalem. Even though you claim to worship the Lord, you do not mean what you say. This is Jeremiah. Surely the Lord looks for faithfulness. He struck you, but you pay no attention. He crushed you, but you refuse to learn. Every single disaster that has occurred, the minute we, some of us are trying to reap benefit in the disaster, and the minute the disaster is over, we go right back to the same foolishness again. Pray for Texas. Pray for this. Pray for that. Rest in peace. All of this stuff means nothing because we go right back to the same. How are you going to lose a friend from alcohol poisoning and then you drinking alcohol to celebrate his death? What kind of sense does that make? So God says, I struck you, but you paid no attention. I crushed you, but you refused to learn. You were stubborn and would not turn from your sins. Then I thought, these are only the poor and the ignorant. Okay, I'll let it slide. They have behaved foolishly. They don't know what their God requires, what the Lord wants them to do. I will go to the people in power and talk with them. Surely they know what their God requires, what the Lord wants them to do, but all of them have rejected the Lord's authority and refused to obey him. Now, this is the Bible talking. It's in different words in the good news and the uh, King James Version, but it, they are the same meaning. God went to the preachers, the righteous, the holy, to see if they would relay the proper message to the people so that they could turn from their wicked ways and do better. But as the scripture says, they did not. What the Lord wants them to do, but all of them have rejected the Lord's authority and refused to obey him. That is why lions from the forest will kill them. Wolves from the desert will tear them up to pieces and leopards will prowl through their towns. This is not just talking about the actual animal, but it's talking about the animal minds of the people who will do anything to get what they want. Rape, murder, kill. If those people go out, they will be torn apart because their sins are numerous and time after time they have turned from God. The Lord asks, why should I forgive the sins of my people? They have abandoned me and have worshipped gods that are not real. What did he say? Why should I, uh, why should I forgive the sins of my people? They have abandoned me and worshipped gods that are not real. I fed my people until they were full, but they committed adultery and spend their time with prostitutes. Not just prostitutes that you pay money to, but a life of sport and play, a transitory life that at the end of the day doesn't amount to anything. That is what we are guilty of. The Sodom and Gomorrah that we are looking for is inside of each individual, rich to poor. They have abandoned me and have worshipped gods that are not real. I fed my people until they were full, but they committed adultery and spent their time with prostitutes. They were like well-fed stallions, wild with desire, each lusting for his neighbor's wife. Shouldn't I punish them for these things and take revenge on a nation such as this? God is taking revenge. I will send enemies to cut them down, my people. I will send enemies to cut down my people's vineyards but not to destroy them completely. Here goes God's mercy. I'm not going to kill them. I'm just going to warn them one last time. I will tell them to strip away the branches before the branches are not, because those branches are not mine. Get rid of all of these false idolatry um, beliefs and practices and turn back to the proper understanding of who and what God is so that we'll understand that when we breathe, we don't breathe for ourselves our breath is life. And when it stops, we're dead. Life is the soul. Breath is the soul. Breath is the spirit. Breath is life. So we should honor the person who gives us breath. We should honor the temple that God gave us to breathe into. But we put all types of substances into the body, substances, and all type of corruptive thinking into the mind. 
and we damage the spirit which is within. So when God came down to Abraham to see if the cry was altogether what he thought in Sodom and Gomorrah, the cry was coming from the Jesus within saying the spirit within saying, get me out of here. Now, the people of Israel and Judah have betrayed me completely. I, the Lord, have spoken. That's final. That's God talking. You are listening to the 19 report and we are almost done. And I thank everyone for tuning in again. You can catch us live on Facebook, live on Ustream. I don't know. I think we're still on Facebook. Yeah, we're still on Facebook for a minute. I apologize for you seeing like the back of my head, but that's where I had to set the camera up for the time being. Now, let's go on. In the New Testament, the first book of the New Testament, Sodom and Gomorrah, is mentioned again. So you know how people are always saying, yeah, you're teaching good, but that's the Old Testament. That don't count no more. I don't know where they get that from, but we do it. So let's go to the New Testament then, which tells us that the sins of this city were still being practiced, and God was still sending prophets and messengers to warn the people to turn from their wicked ways. We are in Matthew now. We're in the New Testament. Now, let's go to Matthew. I always like to put it up on the screen so we can see exactly what's being said. Matthew 10, 14 through 15. Listen to, God, listen to the scriptures. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Have nothing to do with it. Don't turn back. Don't look back because you told them what you needed to tell them, but they refused to listen. 15. Verily I say unto you, it shall be no more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for, the, than for that city. So God is saying what I did in Sodom and Gomorrah is a drop in the bucket compared to the books that I have allowed my prophets and messengers to write and sin. And still the people are going contrary to what I have said. My wrath has built up to the point where Sodom and Gomorrah will be nothing in this day of judgment compared to what I'm going to do. And finally, as proof that we are indeed living in the last days and times worse than any other time ever mentioned in biblical history, God gives one final warning before blowing the horn of total destruction. What a merciful, merciful God we serve. In this world and in the renewal of another. This means that we did not adhere to the biblical warnings from Genesis to Revelations. So the world system has to change, will change, and is changing. I'm going to say that again. The earth did not offend God. Any damage done to the ozone layer or the earth, we did that. Man did that. If you go to the jungles, nobody's plowing it, nobody's bothering it, so beautiful things grow. We destroy that. So God is not angry with the earth. The earth is angry with us. So everything that we plant and do is rebelling against us. So now the satanic mind of this world, the upper echelon whites of this world, the scientists of this world says that we will no longer bow to the earth for food. We'll make food. So genetically modified foods are the thing now. And we've been getting it in little doses from eating sugar pops and Lucky Charms and Dig them smacks, all genetically modified to taste good. But now the very fruits and vegetables of the earth are being genetically modified. They are even pollinating the bees in a lab because the bees are dying. So they're pollinating the bees in a the lab. They're modifying everything. Now that modification of nature is modifying the minds of the people. So the hormones, the, the uh, um, antibiotics, all of these things going into the meat is affecting the minds of the people. If you ever get a chance, look on YouTube for Putin, P-U-T-T-I-N, Putin's cats, where he did an experiment years ago where some cats were eating vegetarian uh, diets and some cats were eating meat-filled diets. The cats who ate the vegetarian diets knew they were cats. But the cats who ate the genetically modified meats and the meat hormones began to fall down on each other. Meaning the male cat wanted sex with the male. The female cat would lick the female cat. The mindset of the cat was confused because everything was modified. So everything has changed 
God is angry and the wrath of God is here, not only on the outside, but on the inside. Diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, stress, um, anything else that you can name, MS, anything that you can think of. That is the earth with inside of us rebelling against the negative actions of Satan. Now, let's go into Revelations. The book of Revelation is 21, and I'm going to read it in its entirety. I'm trying my best to get it done fast. It seems like I'm not moving, though. Book of Revelation 21, King James Bible. God talking. No, uh, John talking. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were, was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So this new Jerusalem will replace this now Jerusalem. And because we are people who need to see it happen in an instant, we don't even realize it's happening. So as cancer grows in the body, we don't even think about it until it's so bad that we can't be cured. As the cancer grows throughout the earth, earthquakes, famine, floods, death, we pay it no mind because we're partying so hard. But the new Jerusalem is coming in. I don't care who is in authority or where they are in authority. Nobody supersedes the God of all, of everything. So God says you're praising and you're dancing and you're singing. I don't even hear that anymore because inside of us is where the corruption is. The new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bridegroom adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is within men. What? Revelations, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them out of heaven saying, behold, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, God is gradually walking among the people. But if we knew that there were angels and gods among us, as I said in the last commentary, we would stress them out, kill them. Constantly, well, I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, what, do, you, what you got for me? What you and then if you don't get what you want, you're going to want them dead. That was what was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities of the plain. They knew that angels had the answers to things that they did not know. So they said, Lot, send them out to us. We want them. We want to question them. We want to know what they know. How do you know that? Because Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't just cities of all men. These cities had women, children, and men. How do you know? Because Lot's daughters were there. Because Lot's wife was there. That's why. So don't think that this was a place of homosexuality and everybody just butt naked booty bumping. That's too easy. And it's too easy to put that on the people that do that and not take accountability for what you and I are doing wrong. God, uh, John talking and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death nor sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away all of this stuff is because of this world the death the mourning the crying the body aching all of this stuff is because of the chemical intake that we take in from this world it tastes good but it's not good for us. And now the last thing you can do is destroy the fruits and vegetables and it's being done because the main objective is profit. Make money. And he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is our a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. See, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Wait a minute. I thought Jesus was the only son of God. No, God says I will be their God, and he shall be my son. But the, fe the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall I have their part, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, we are coming to a close. And I didn't have to drink water once, even though my throat is dry. The second death. The second death is realization. 
The second death is death of ideologies and belief. The second death is death of ego. The second death is death of status and position. Remember when the, the rich man came to Jesus and told him he wanted to follow and ask him how could he be a follower? And Jesus told the rich man, first, you got to give away your possessions, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. And the rich man couldn't fathom doing that. So he walked away and he, how can I be born again? Started questioning Jesus so he could get out of doing that. That is us. We don't want to backtrack and think about what we believed all of this time because we don't want to have to change the way we think. So we're going to justify whatever it is we believe till the day we die. But God is saying on that, you will die, but you will die without my blessings. Even though you may think you're going to heaven, I don't hear a word you're saying. Your heaven is right now. <clears throat> Now, the second death is the death of the ego, death of status and position. Pharaoh and all of the pharaohs in biblical history died the second death before experiencing final death. Remember, God sent all of those warnings to Pharaoh saying, let my people go. And the final warning was he drowned them in the Red Sea. Well, he had to realize at that point in his life, wow, God is the greatest. Look at what he did. So because Pharaoh re, re, re recognized God as the greatest, God allowed him to hold a place in biblical history. Pharaoh died knowing that I was God. And this world will die the same. Because in all that is happening around us, there's a white woman in Louisiana who wrote CNN and Fox News, and she said, we are desperate here. And we're dying and people are dying around us, but you don't make this headline news because it's not controversy. There's nothing controversial about flooding and death, so you don't make it headline news. So people don't know what we're going through. White woman wrote this today. Now, they were warned time after time, but their arrogance wouldn't allow them to change. It's no different today. Even the bum, the prostitute, the executive, the president, Businessmen and women, police, the crook, the drug dealer, the priest, the preacher, the ministers, all of us filled with egotistical thought, filled with selfish desires, filled with everything that God disapproves of. And we have no desire to change it. We only want to justify it. So that's why in scripture, every single prophet and messenger that came to said, you must change the people killed him. They killed them with words first. They discredited them with gossip next. And then they physically killed them. And that is why from Dr. Martin Luther King to Malcolm X to Mega Evans and all the greats in between. The great Marcus Garvey, Denmark Vasey, all of the Black Panther Party were maligned, discredited, and then murdered. Because this world does not want to change and we wear them on our shirt as some badge of honor. We wear crosses around our neck as some badge of honor when it is a badge of shame because it is proof that we rejected God's warnings. We almost finished. Now Jesus said, deny yourself. How can God use us if we are unable to separate from our desires for self-gratification? Sodom and Gomorrah and every other wicked place throughout scripture is inside of us. Now I want you and me and us to think about that really hard. Sodom and Gomorrah, overindulgence in pleasure of body and mind, so much so that the spirit of God within was being crucified. It is that spirit that called out to God for salvation in Sodom and Gomorrah. God answered it then, and he is answering it now. So just as he had to come then, he has visited America. You can't fathom that. Because you see Bible as some mythical book that you can believe any way you want. The book has been corrupted by those who rewrote it. But the essence of the book can be understood by those God gives the wisdom to understand it. And it's many. Black, white, red, brown, and yellow understand that book. Every single race of people because God is just. And he will send people to people to warn them. 
But you look around and see what is happening in the world today. And everything that is happening that you think don't have nothing to do with you, think again. My phone is going dead. Uh, thank everybody on Facebook for those who tuned in for a second. I appreciate that. Uh, I know we can't stay on long. If it ain't sports or some vine or some naked woman or some stupid something, we ain't going to stay on long. But I thank you for staying on the time that you did. And I want to read this, and then we're going to close. What is Sodom and Gomorrah, and where is it now? Matthew 24. I want to read that, and then we're going to close. Matthew 24, the King James Version of the Bible. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Does that sound familiar? See that ye be not troubled. Don't stress it. For all these things must come to pass. This is God saying, I'm in control of all of this. Don't be troubled by it. It must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. And all these are the beginning of sorrow. Now, God is saying this is not the end when these things occur. This is just the beginning. So God's mercy is for the people, the children of Israel, the people of Jerusalem, because what? We are unable to prepare for disaster. We turn to others when disaster strikes, yet we spend money on TVs in every room, including the bathroom. But we turn to others when disaster strikes. So out of mercy, God is allowing these things to unfold piecemeal to give us time to get ourselves together. The question is, will we get ourselves together? This is Brother Johnny of the 19 Report. Telling it like it is, Groove 19 promotion. Sincerely thanking everybody for tuning in. Now, I want to say this. We did another commentary on Sodom and Gomorrah some years ago. And you can find that commentary. We talked specifically about the ego in that particular one. And you can find that in our website, The 19 Report on YouTube. Thank you again for tuning in. This is Brother Johnny signing off.